Locked On Podcast Network and State Farm Insurance present Paving the Way, a new series highlighting important voices across Locked On's network. Every month, our host, Kanani Stevens, will showcase other Locked On hosts who come from underserved communities to hear the challenges they face to become a sports broadcast personality. Who will be paving the way this episode? Find out now. Welcome into the first episode of Paving the Way, a part of the Locked On Podcast Network presented by State Farm. This is a podcast that shines a light on our Locked On hosts from marginalized communities and backgrounds. I'm Kainani Stevens. Throughout the year, we're going to be talking to our hosts to learn more about them and their experiences. On this episode, we'll be talking to Jeff Garcia. He is our host of Locked On Spurs. Jeff has been a lifelong Spurs fan, and he grew up in San Antonio. We find out about his background, how that shaped his career in sports journalism. Welcome into our inaugural edition of Paving the Way. Jeff Garcia from Locked On Spurs is joining us. Jeff, thank you so much. I'm really excited to kind of hear a little bit of your background, obviously, and and find out a little bit about how you got to where you are. Uh, You're from San Antonio, so I can imagine the Spurs being the only show in town that was a big part of your childhood growing up. That was the only part of my childhood growing up. That was it. There was nothing more, nothing less. Sure, you had your minor league teams, your USFLs, you know, your minor league hockey, but it was it's really the silver and black. And that's really all it is. So everybody grew up with the Spurs. Uh, I'm old enough to remember when they moved from the ABA to the NBA. I remember Hemisphere Arena just being one floor and everybody was allowed to smoke inside the arena. Okay. So I kind of grew up with them. The Spurs are just one year older than me. So we kind of grew up together. So they've been a part of my life since uh, birth. And uh, here I am now on the Locked On Network uh, hosting Locked On Spurs. And my path to where I am now running for one of the Tegna outlets in San Antonio, Kins 5 San Antonio. Uh, If you had told me this when I was a teenager, I would have said, nah, you're full of it. There's no way. And here I am. Um, tell us a little bit about San Antonio. I know it's the only show in town, but obviously there's a big Mexican population there. Yeah. Um, and, mm-hmm. and kind of what's the fan base like? Well, it is a very, I mean, it's predominantly uh, Mexican, Hispanic. I mean, that's all it is. I mean, it's to the point where the Spurs have uh, adopted the culture from Fiesta Nights to one of their uh, alternate jerseys this year is a Mexican Serape design on the uniform itself. So uh, to say it's embedded within the uh, community, it's embedded within the community. A uh, very hardworking, uh, you know, the socioeconomic dynamics of the city is interesting. Mm-hmm. It's it's a uh, it's middle class, but it's heavier uh, lower class, mm-hmm. and uh, the upper class is very very uh, slim. It's you know your your upper one percenters in San Antonio. Mm-hmm. So the big there's a big disparity in San Antonio, and uh, credit the Spurs, uh, you know, for adopting the culture. Um, look at their hashtag. It's called Por Vida. It's, it means for life. And so the Spurs for life. So they really try to embrace that uh, culture. And I appreciate that from them. But uh, yeah, uh, growing up, you know, you, you, you know, you, you see people of color, you know, predominantly my, my color, really. I mean, and it's everywhere. It's everywhere. I mean, I, I went to a, um, I went to an all boys military high school. That's okay. where I went to. And it's interesting because had I gone to the uh, public high school, it would have been a majority of kids that look like me. I went to an all boys military high school and it was all kids that were, did not look like me. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was a minority in a very heavy minority city in a high school. Mm-hmm. So uh, uh, again, you know, but as much as that was different for me, because, you know, in school it was, I don't see you guys in my block. And I come back home, it's, hey, I, these are my friends. So, uh, but I, I embraced it because it, it forced me to adapt. Mm-hmm. And it forced me to adapt to so many cultures to the point now where I'm actually based in New York City and San Antonio. I have two residences there. And New York City just really opened my eyes. I mean, there's mm-hmm. there's running and then there's sprinting. And that's what New York City is, sprinting. You have to adapt yep. to everything. So, um but I, I I think it's made me well-rounded, if anything. It, it, it forced me to adapt fast to different cultures and different thoughts and different people of color. It's always good to kind of be around those different communities mm-hmm. and, and see how they live and, and kind of understand that perspective. Mm-hmm. Um, I know you mentioned that you kind of experienced that in high school, you experienced that now. 
when you were growing up and and kind of figuring out what you wanted to do and and obviously the Spurs were always in that mix um sure. when did you kind of decide you want you wanted to um you know be involved with the media and and kind of covering this team day to day yeah it's, i think it was the first time i moved to new york city and uh, a lot a lot of homesickness it was really what it was my first time really away from texas or let alone san antonio now i've lived away before but it wasn't to the extent of all right this is going to be my permanent residence for more than a decade uh, and uh, I got a little homesick and there was uh, an advertisement for a little startup blog that said, Hey, we're going to write about the Spurs. This is new thing called blogging. We don't, we, I mean, this is the very beginning roots of it. Um, early two thousands. It's when I really uh, started going. So I said, sure. Why not? And I just took a leap of faith and I tried it and sure, you, you know, it wasn't the greatest. I look back at those articles. And I'm like, Oh my God, how, mm -hmm. what, what was I doing? But um, I, I got a taste of it and I got the feedback was coming back positive. It wasn't a lot of, you know, hater comments, nothing like that. It was like, Hey, good point. I like this. Mm -hmm. Who are you? Uh, wow. You're, you're really capturing what it is to be a fan. So you fast forward and now mind you, I'm still based in New York city at this time. Mm -hmm. And NY uh, and the NBA uh, headquarters is not that far from me. It's on Broadway, and you you would you would you know I would run into some of the people there at events. Mm -hmm. I would see them the, the NBA three on three events. I would go to watch, and mm -hmm. I said, you know what, I'm going to ask them if I can go to the NBA summer league. Some little blogger out in New York from San Antonio is going to ask them, and I applied. And they at that time I think they asked me to send us a, a quick uh, sample or a link. I sent them, they said, okay, you're going. I said, okay. So I left to Vegas. Now, mind you, this was before the summer league was even a summer league. This is back when nobody would go. Yeah. It was just the it was just there. So I tried it and that was my first taste to it. And I I got I got I got I started liking it to the mm -hmm. point where I'm thinking, like, why did my guidance counselor tell me to go this path? I should have gone this path. Yeah. <laughs> and but and it, and it grew and I wanted more and wanted more. And I said, you know what? I think I have a natural inclination to this. I think I have an, somewhat of a natural talent for this. Yeah. And, but my path to where I am now, I mean, I, I, again, I, 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 I can't believe it. I can't believe it happened like this from a blogger to going to be recruited by a San Antonio based uh, Tecna competitor. Uh -huh. uh, and I was with them just one day they just said, Hey, we like what you're doing at this website. Can you do this? And we're going to hire you. And I was like, what? And we're going to give you the keys to the car and we're going to give you your own TV show. Uh, yeah. Cover the Spurs. Sure. I'll do it. Left with them for years. And then Tegna came knocking on the door and then locked on spur uh, locked on network uh, came knocking on the door and yeah, here I am now. <laughs> Who knew? That's a pretty great story. Yeah. I mean, you love that when it kind of comes together, especially when it's mm -hmm. a passion of yours. Um, you mentioned your time, you know, blogging and then and then the ability to kind of jump to TV. Mm -hmm. Throughout that process, is there some mentors that you might oh, yeah. have encountered? I mean, yeah. this is obviously not an easy career for anybody. So you you definitely mm -hmm. need that support there and someone mm -hmm. to kind of guide you along the way. Yeah, at the uh, my first jump from leaving the fan blogging world to the actual media world where this is a major San Antonio outlet, TV outlet. Uh, there was a man there and his name was Bob Gambert. And we, we struck it. We, 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 we kind of, we had a lot first we were just friends. We just became really good friends, but he saw something in me and he kept on pushing me and pushing me and urging me. And even when I wasn't working with him, I was still at the fan blog. He would always give me advice. And then that's when he approached me or I think I approached him and I reached out to him, excuse me to tell him like, Hey, you know, I'm thinking about moving away. Look, I, I, look, I don't have any experience in major TV outlets like you, you guys, mm -hmm. but what do you say? You know, what do you think? Trial basis. He goes, you know what? Here are the keys to the car. We've seen what you did. I know what you can do. And I've seen you on TV when we would, you know, have some fun, you know, at the station, here you go, go for it. And I was with them from about 2014 till about 2020, 21. Uh, and honing my skills and he, you know, he would feedback, constant feedback, TV, you know, you're doing this wrong. You're doing this right. Uh, you know, urging me, encouraging me. If I had even the most dominant idea in my head, 
he would say, no, let's work with it. So he was very instrumental and in just being so encouraging, so positive, always with a smile. And he would always say, at the end of the day, whether it's with me at my outlet or at a competitor outlet, I just want what's best for you. And uh, yeah, he, he, he's, he was really, really big in, in my path. So great to have those people because mm -hmm. I mean, who knows where we'd be without them, right? I mean, yeah. you, sometimes you need that, just that opportunity. And then also mm -hmm. someone to kind of kick in the butt and be like, hey, that doesn't work, do this or yeah. you know, whatever you need to get yeah. a little bit better. Um, we talked a little bit about it, but obviously there's an underrepresentation of maybe the demographic in yeah. San Antonio on mm -hmm. TV, in writing, in sports mm -hmm. media in general. Um, do you kind of take it upon yourself to, you know, really try to be a good representation? Obviously, you want yeah. to do good for yourself in general, but also mm -hmm. to show other people that this can be done and it should be done. Yeah. And, and I think now uh, at this point, I'm looking at the landscape, especially in San Antonio, and it, I am just stunned. I'm baffled. Uh, you know, you have, as we mentioned, a, a, a overwhelming majority is a Mexican culture, mm -hmm. is Hispanic people in general in San Antonio. Uh, it's just so overwhelming. But you look on TV. And we're not there. Mm -hmm. You look in writing, beat writers, they're not there at all. At all. There's been some that come and gone, but there's never been a stable face, a permanent, consistent face on television in print. Now, I give San Antonio credit on radio. Thumbs up. Thumbs yeah. up. They got it. Radio representation is there. But TV and print, it's 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 horrible. And and I'm not trying to toot my own to on my own horn here, but I'm probably the closest they have to the face of a San Antonio Spurs beat writer in San Antonio. Mm -hmm. I'm probably the closest they got. I I'm you know forgive me, if there's somebody else out there in San Antonio. I'm sorry, but I checked and I cannot find another one. Look at the major newspaper outlet, nothing. You look at some of the major uh, TV mark TVs, no, mm -hmm. it's not there. It's not there. It's not any heavy, heavy presence. And I think they need that. I think San Antonio desperately needs that. And it's been like, and it's not a recent thing. This has been going on for years. Mm -hmm. So, but I think slowly but surely you're starting to see the turn little by little. And I think I'm part of that front. And when it comes to this uh, specific uh, demographic, the Mexican de demographic, and I hope it gets bigger, but it really feels like it's just at a crawl right now. Like something's got to give. So I took upon it myself to join the San Antonio Hispanic uh, Journalism Association. Mm -hmm. Hopefully that will help me help usher in something or just be a spark for something. And, but trust me, there are, I think, I think the next wave that will come after me, then we'll see it. I think we're going to start seeing that, especially in San Antonio. Hopefully, of course. I mean, I, mm -hmm. I, I'm sure you experienced what I experienced growing up. You don't see a lot of yourself mm -hmm. you in don't. the mediums that you want to mm -hmm. be in. So you're, you're wondering, is that even possible? Is that a mm -hmm. thing I can do? Because you don't see yeah. it. So I know I take that responsibility on when I'm, you know, mm -hmm. reporting. I try to be, you know, the best I can be. What kind of right. stories do you try to tell? What do you try to convey to to set a good example for, you know, maybe people right. watching that think they might want to do it someday? Yeah. And, and you know, just the Lockdown Spurs fans or just um, on the Tecna side of the writing side that I do for Tecna uh, fans, uh, they're they're all, they're encouraging me. Uh, so if, if, if another outlet gets a, a representation a representative for a sports uh, position, they will say that should have been you, Jeff. That should have been you. You should have gotten it. Mm -hmm. So you can you can feel the desire for that representation, yeah. and uh, I'm proud that they look at me to try to go in that direction. Now it's just about you know kicking the doors open and saying, hey, look, we've been here. We're here. We can do it just as well. Trust us. We we got this. And 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 I think I think it needs to be addressed. And that's something that really, really it gets my passion going. It's like, come on, San Antonio, we can do better. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Um, I think our locked on viewers know we bring a very unique perspective to mm -hmm. all the teams that we cover because we're so hyper local. Um, you are super hyper local, if I should say mm -hmm. that, because you've, you know, grew up in San Antonio yeah. and you've been around the team for so long. Mm -hmm. So what are some of the things that you feel like you can touch on that maybe other people aren't aware of um, and can kind of bring to to the job that you do just for having been around the team for so long and knowing of it so long? Yeah, I I, I think it, it that's kind of that's kind of difficult to answer because it's kind of been the same, you know, it's since Popovich arrived. There really hasn't been True. much. It, it's very the same blueprint. You know, you've, you, at this point, everybody should have heard 
or know about what the team uh, under the current Popovich uh, regime preaches. It's check your ego at the door. Uh, no bozos on the squad. Everything is lock and key. And the Spurs, you know, I mean, look, if you go back in time, it wasn't the major outlets that revealed that LaMarcus Aldridge was on his way out. It was Popovich. It wasn't the major outlets that re- reported that Becky Hammond was on her way out. It was Popovich. So they kind of keep things in a vault. So I guess my, you know, for those that are looking to go in the direction of the Spurs, just brace for that. You know, you're, yeah. you're, you know, you're, it's you're almost like kind of barking at a wall, but I do give the Spurs credit little by little, you know, they're, they're kind of easing up a bit, uh, you know, uh, credit to the Spurs, at least this season, they've been good about, you know, saying, hey, would you like to help us break some news, whether it be from their G League team uh, revealing New Jerseys uh, <laughs> to the, the organization saying, hey, Jeff, we want you to break the news that we're going to dive into uh, mobile gaming. Mm-hmm. Could you help us out? So I do give the, the Spurs credit there. I mean, they, they, they're they starting to crack the door open a little, a little bit, a little bit. So um, and also I think a big shout out to them because for them, maybe not for other yeah. agencies, but for the Spurs, um, they given me, uh, and for those of you who don't know, the NBA has a new tier media pass system this season and that I've given the tier one, the highest. So they allow me to go into the locker rooms. So mm-hmm. I think that that is a big, big step in the right direction. So credit to them, but, uh, yeah, they're definitely going in the right direction. And so great validation for the work that you've done, mm-hmm. obviously for them to recognize that and, and, yeah. and see that you're top tier literally yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> in covering their organization. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, you mentioned it a little bit, but this these are a little bit of different times for the Spurs yes. because they're not the team they have mm-hmm. always been, always mm-hmm. been. Um, so uh, for you, that must be interesting and, and kind of unique to cover now to see mm-hmm. them in this process, rebuild, right. whatever you want to call it. And then also, however long Coach Popovich will be around and involved mm-hmm. with the team. Yeah, it's, it's different now. As a fan, I've gone through, I think this is my third rebuild with the organization. I had the initial wave with the, the ABA when they came in and then the pre Robinson era and then now. So I've, mm-hmm. I've gone through three rebuilds, but this is the first one where I'm actually you know covering it. Yep. My fan, it was just a fan. I was like, okay, well, whatever, you know, they'll fix it. But now I get fans asking me questions like, should they trade Yaka Brittle? Uh, you know, no, they just should keep them to when is pop leaving, you know, something's got to give. So mm-hmm. Now I'm on this end, and uh, as far as covering them, you just got to get creative. I think you have to understand that the fans, they know what it is. In the season, it is what it is. It's a down yeah. season, the first in decades. Mm-hmm. So you got to start getting creative. Um, I think this season, what I'm trying to do is shed light on the new generation of Spurs. Mm-hmm. So that being, whether it be Jeremy Sohan, the rookie, Devin Vassell, Kelvin Johnson, As of right now, they're still part of the team, and this may be the core. So the idea I have been having this season is let's let's cover the babies and watch them grow up. Kind of like when you see your your favorite kid TV star. You say, hey, we grew up with them. Now look at them. They're 20 years old. Yeah, Yeah, back when they were just five years old on Family Ties, and now look at them. Uh, I think that's the same idea here is just let's get to know these kids and see their path. And, uh, um, you know, uh, going back to the Spurs and yeah, they had asked me like when I was in the locker room recently, they're like, well, who do you want to talk to? I said, I, I don't really care. Just give me a veteran player. I'm like, okay, well, why? And I said, oh, I think I'm going to start doing a feature on the veterans reflecting on the rookies and their their growth. And the, the Spurs were like, they took a pause. They're like, we like that. We like that. That's a good idea. <laughs> they're like that. So. Yeah, I think that's the idea. Just uh, let's let's see these kids nourish, get better, get, uh, you know, are they going to be part of the future? Are they going to be a trade ship? I mean, whoever thought that DeJounte Murray was going to get traded? Here mm-hmm. they are. Derek White, same thing. Whoever thought they would trade them? Mm, you know, so yeah. it is different, different uncharted waters for uh, most of the Spurs fans. But for an old guy like me, if just a rebuild, I'm like, ah, you'll it blink, you blink your eyes and it'll go by fast. And the next thing you know, they're back at the top of the mountain. It is different covering them now, I mm-hmm. will say. And especially I've covered the Patriots for a long time and they're yeah. difficult in their own way as well. So when you say things like that, it kind of rings an alarm bell in my head because yeah. when you have to be a little bit critical, 
you know, when they're trading people away and, and not necessarily that they're doing the wrong thing, but, you know, people mm-hmm. are like, why are we doing this? You know, mm-hmm. you're trying to be the voice of a fan, like questioning things like that. Mm-hmm. Um, do you feel like you've, I mean, I, I think I know that part of the answer, but you feel like you've earned enough respect. You can kind of ask mm-hmm. those questions and, and yeah. have that voice and not feel like you have to, you know, spout a certain uh, rhetoric necessarily in regards to the team. Yeah. I, I'm comfortable at that point. now. I think mm-hmm. I have enough, uh, I guess, seniority, so to speak yeah. with the team where they, they know that I'm going to go in there and ask some ridiculous off the wall question to pop or a player. They know it'll be serious, whether it be about player development, uh, yeah. whether it be, you know, just simple, basic X's and O's. Uh, mm-hmm. Sometimes the Spurs fans want to know that. Well, well why did, why did you, why did the Spurs give Jeremy Sohan the ball to inbound a play in the Madison square garden and all that mess up there? Yeah. You know, I, I feel enough confidence now where the Spurs would be. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You, you go for it, Jeff. You know, we, we trust you. I mean, they give me a tier one media pass. So I think that should speak volumes right there. So, yeah. Uh, and, and then plus two, I try not to forget also my roots. Because, mm-hmm. you know, I didn't, it wasn't like college and then jumped into media. And my man path was different. Mm-hmm. And I think that's what fans like about me is that I haven't forgotten my fandom roots. You know, it's okay when locked on Spurs or we're laughing and reminiscing about the times where, you know, the water cannon went out in uh, the 90s in the Alamo Dome. You're like, oh, yeah, I was a fan there, too. I remember that. And I think that's what draws the connection. It's like, hey, I'm, you know, I'm not this stuffy guy in a suit and tie that just pen to paper and don't bother me. You don't know anything about sports. You don't know anything about the Spurs. No, I invite their opinion. I invite it. And I, and I think that just helps me produce a better show like Locked on Spurs. Absolutely. It's always important to have mm-hmm. that connection and remember where you came from. We're all fans at the end of the day. Right. Um, and I think that's what makes people feel genuine mm-hmm. and people relate to that a lot. Right. As well. Absolutely. Jeff locked on Spurs is pretty well-rounded. You guys don't just do X's and O's. You talk about stuff that's important in the community. Mm-hmm. You talk about things, um, you know, that are important issues to anybody that might be in San Antonio. So what are some stuff that you guys have been covering lately that you feel like is important, not just from a basketball aspect? Yeah, absolutely. And I think this past Monday's Locked On Spurs is somebody as something that everybody should uh, take a listen to. Uh, so we've been doing something new this season. We were bringing in a uh, doctor based out of uh, Austin, Texas, Dr. Ryan McCorkle. He comes on once a week, you know, to talk about, for example, Devin Vassell's injury or Yaka Pertle, you know, suffered this and whatnot. But this one was different because uh, he wanted to and I wanted to address uh, some uh, I guess stereotypes about San Antonio or just Mm -hmm. somebody who doesn't understand the socioeconomic background of San Antonio. That was a former Spur, ironically, Steven Jackson. Uh, He did, he hosts a a show called all the smoke podcast. And in a recent chat with DeJounte Murray, he took a shot, uh, you know, kind of made fun of uh, the people of San Antonio. Uh, He took a shot at the women of San Antonio, very Charles uh, Mm Barkley-esque saying how women in San Antonio are overweight that nobody does goes to the gym and they were just making a lot of it. Now, you know, DeJounte, you know, kind of chuckled too. So basically that was kind of a cringe moment. And I think everybody should, especially if we're from San Antonio, go listen to that lockdown Spurs, Dr. Ryan McCorkle, he addressed, uh, you know, ways to, you know, for those in San Antonio that want to live a healthy lifestyle and also why what Steven Jackson said was wrong about the people of San Antonio, because uh, the socioeconomic uh, makeup of the city, wasn't factored in basically it was he just took a very insensitive approach instead of a mm-hmm. sensitive approach as he maybe should have but i i okay, whatever he said what he said but mm-hmm. i think people don't understand that you know the socioeconomics background of san antonio not many people can afford you know the proper food or to maintain a healthy diet mm-hmm. let alone uh, memberships uh for gyms so I think that's a very, very important Locked On Spurs that people really need to look at and listen to. Uh, it's on YouTube. It's already Locked On Spurs YouTube page as well as um, Odyssey app and everything. But yeah, check it out. You know, see why Dr. Ryan McCorkle says that was wrong. And if you're interested in learning how to properly maintain a, a healthy diet, go check it out. It's this past Monday's Locked On Spurs. And Jeff, I, I'll I'll mention it myself. I mean, that's why mm-hmm. it's important to have, you know, someone from San Antonio, proper mm-hmm. representation of the area to kind of give that perspective because people, mm-hmm. you know, haven't been there, played there, but didn't mm-hmm. understand, you know, they don't, right. they don't understand that. Right. So mm-hmm. I, I think I, I'll say I appreciate your perspective and I'm sure mm-hmm. a lot of other people do too, because 
you, you wouldn't have it otherwise if you just are a reporter that came in and never lived there and don't understand. Mm -hmm. So right. that's a great um, mm -hmm. point of view and perspective to have, certainly. Um, Absolutely. And, and in that representation, you know, for kids out there right now that don't mm -hmm. see themselves in that sports media job or, or whatever mm -hmm. position it may be, what's some advice that you have for them um, to kind of yeah. motivate them going forward? Yeah. I, the first thing is perseverance. Don't give up. Uh, keep on chopping that tree down. That's all I got to say. You look at me, you know, I kept chopping the tree, chopping the tree and uh, don't you know, close any opportunities that come your way at all. My path was different. It was very non-traditional. I mean, I wasn't the, you know, going to communications you know, degree, nothing like that. Uh, mine was more based on experience and uh, years of experience. This was not overnight at all. So if you're taking a very traditional approach, maybe the, you know, the gap will be a little shorter for you because you have that education background that I don't have. But if you're just looking to get into it, I think overall, the overarching thing is don't shy away at trying new things, at the experience. I mean, look at me, I, I may, you know, covered lockdown spurs, but I started covering also the, the NBA 2K League. Mm -hmm. Try different things, add more, think of it like your portfolio and your investing, diversify, mm -hmm. diversify, let people know that you can do a little bit of everything, whether it be in my case, lockdown spurs, NBA or, you know, esports and NBA 2K League. You know, and I think especially trying to get into the NBA, the NBA itself will recognize that and they'll start leaning on you, talking to you a little bit more about that, involving you in things uh, and whether or it's MLB or NFL, the same thing. If it's a very non-traditional path, just understand it's going to take a while. Have patience. Experience matters. Experience matters. And I don't care if they somebody asks you to write about, you know, the mascot of the uh, San Francisco Giants. Just do it. Yeah. Take it and run with it and make it the best. Be consistent. Be concise. Be precise. Uh, and just try your best. And you're going to smack your face in the wall. But mm -hmm. get up and keep on plowing ahead. You're going to make mistakes. I made mistakes. Everybody's going to make mistakes. Just learn from them. Jeff, thank you so much for sharing your story. Mm -hmm. We appreciate hearing how you got to where you are and, and what you guys are doing today. Mm -hmm. Of course, all of our viewers can check out Locked on Spurs wherever they get podcasts from to check in with you guys on YouTube as well. And thank you for joining us on Paving the Way. Locked On and State Farm will be making donations to the nonprofit organization Everyone On to support our efforts to pave the way for others. Everyone On helps bring low-cost internet access and computer offers to those who need them in under-resourced communities. Thank you so much for being a part of our very first episode of Paving the Way. Subscribe to Locked On Presents and follow along as we highlight Locked On voices from across our network all year long.